Coming to order at 6.03. Um, I want to welcome Orice Ainsworth to the board. She was appointed by the Harbuck Select Board Committee uh, on April 2nd. So welcome. Um, Thank you. Welcome, Orice. Thank you. We and I did send in my oath of office today, so I'm official. Great. Oh, good. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? I, I think you and I discussed about removing some stuff, but I'm not sure if we did. Oh, yeah. Um, I, so, I mean, I think some of this stuff can go by really quickly. Okay. Um, in terms of the teacher appreciation week details and I mean, we could, it's hard for me to know really what to pull. I think we did pull the PTO stuff, which actually I was reminded uh, factors into the fundraiser policy. So, which well, is the reason why we had that. Yeah. So how school closure will affect the budget. We're actually sitting in on a webinar tomorrow. Tomorrow. So we can, I can report out to people about that webinar after that meeting. So okay. we, can, we can pull number nine. Okay. Um, We're going to cross out how, how the collusion is going to affect our budget. Well, because Adam and I are, are, are sitting in on a, ha the state is having a webinar tomorrow at 1045 that's going to specifically talk about how this is going to affect our budgets. So a lot of what we would like, I think that we will know more and we can report out from what we learned and then we can have it on the, we can have a further discussion about it on, um, in the May meeting or the second April meeting, what, I guess, in, if we need in to. May? In May? Uh, yeah, that's our next formal meeting. What's the meeting on the 20th? The 20th is a meeting uh with this with the it's supposed to be like a community uh meeting where we talk about the utilization of the campuses okay. and then we yep. narrow it down to 10 i think was the plan for that one um so yeah that's what the meeting on the 20th is okay thanks yep i yeah, I thought. Yeah, it it's it's minor, but I th I know that the twentieth is our brainstorming meeting for that was originally scheduled for Lakeview. But I thought the narrowing down of ideas was the May meeting yeah, that was scheduled right. for Hardware. You're right. It is. Okay, it's minor. But. Yeah, no, no, no. It's fair. Um, I mean, I I think we can do these quick i know there are eight of them or we can just do them how we do them and then whatever we don't get to we just push that sounds good do any do you want to do you want to set it oh sorry do you want to set like a time limit for each of those items to kind of keep uh keep them on track yeah how about we um how about we see what time it is when we get out of executive session is everybody okay with that? Uh -huh. and we can split up the time there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do it. Sounds fair. Okay. Okay. So, uh, is there? Uh, we need to approve the minutes of March fourth. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of Mar March fourth? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll it. second that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of, or is there any discussion or questions or changes? Okay, um, all those in favor, do we have to do a, each person vote for this, Adam? No, as long as um, Tammy can see uh, who's talking. Okay, so everybody unmute yourself, please. And all those in favor of um, approving the minutes of March 4th, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Four rise is abstaining. Okay. I've not seen a copy of them, so. Okay, motion, ca motion carries. All right, is there any public comment? I don't think there's any public on here. Bye, Foxy. Um, okay, now my question. Somebody just joined with a 6-4 number, I think. Do we know who that is? Is, it, is that a public member or? I'm not sure. I don't know how to find this out. The person whose phone number ends with 64, can you unmute yourself and let us know who you are? The, oh, hey. Hi, this is Emmett Avery. Oh, hey, Emmett. Are you, are you on 64? Okay, yeah, thanks. We did. Okay, Emmett, What's thank up? you. Thank you. All right. We just weren't, do you have any public comment or are you here for the Gazette? I'm just here for the, with the Gazette. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay. Um, all right, well then, so. Do I have to call that other number? Well, I'm, I'm just gonna sort of, everybody understands that we are going to Let's see, Adam, do we want to wait the five minutes until 6.15? It's up to you. I can uh, give you, I can go into, we can do my incidental or. Um, yeah, how about we you do that? You had your executive session at 6.10. Does it say 6.10 or, I thought it was 6.15. It said 6.10. The 6.15 was administration report. The invite I shared said 6.15. Uh, yeah, the invite said yeah. 6.15. So let's do that because I don't want to, I don't want to. Okay. Yeah, let's just do that. So go ahead and do your incidental. That's great. Yeah, so I'll just give you an update. Um, <clears throat> today, I um, what's that? Yes, yeah. yeah, sorry. Adam, thank um, you. Okay. Um, thank you. So, yeah, the state required each supervisory union or unified district to submit a con continuity of learning plan um, to cover the uh, school closures and the, the remote learning period. So, um, I submitted ours uh, last week, maybe a week and a half ago, and just shared it out with um, all staff today. I had shared it with, with the leadership team last week, gotten some feedback, and um, shared that with teachers. Been working closely with um, Union President Will Adams um, on this and other things. He and I actually touch base by phone each day, um, and that's proven very helpful. Um, so this continuity of learning plan will shift us technically from maintenance of learning, which has been um, supposedly a period of just, you know, touching base with kids, making sure they're all right, um, to continuation of learning. But in our case, our teachers, as with a lot of teachers really across the state, kind of came out of the gate pretty fast. And, you know, all our schools had um, packets for the initial two weeks already prepared. So there was a lot of hard copy material that went out. And after that, we're really moving toward um, online learning. I, um, I touch base with each principal today about um, who has access and who doesn't. And really a lot more folks than we had anticipated do have access, uh, but some don't. And some live on that uh, last mile. It's called where the, the services, even if you wanted them, you can't get them because the fiber or the cable doesn't run out to your home. So we're working on, uh, at the VSA or the Vermont Superintendents Association level to lobby for uh, companies to really have a plan in place to provide that service. It's probably a long range plan, but this is an optimal time to, to do that lobbying because um, obviously we're in a crisis situation. Teachers have uh, done an amazing job of uh, connecting with kids, making sure they're okay, advancing learning, or they're, they're sharing strategies and resources, platforms like Google Classroom and Seesaw and Schoology, which are all LMSs or learning management systems. And that's how they're coordinating learning with their students. Our continuity of learning plan is really a continuation of 
some of the work, well, all of the work really that we started at the beginning of this year and even work that was begun earlier around um, Act 77. So flexible pathways, proficiency-based learning and um, personalized learning plans. So it's really a, a plan to cultivate learner agency through reflective practice by doing some of the same things we were heading toward anyway, uh, but maybe with uh, more of a blended approach. So blended learning means blending technology with um, conventional learning. And if there were ever a time to focus on learner agency, this is it, because our kids are at home, in some cases alone, uh, and they need to be self-directed. Um, so that's where we are, that's where we're headed. So after the break, we'll enter this stage, official stage of uh, continuation of learning. I have a question for you, Adam. This is sure. part school board member, part parent, but um, I'm one of the lucky few that lives where we have internet technically, but it's really subpar. So a lot of the connecting that my, my kiddo, my personal children are, um, the teachers are trying to connect with them by like, uh, like this kind of format, which we can't do. So do teachers around the district have a plan on the keeping that connection with those kids that can't do the video conferences and whatnot? Yes, so um, if you don't have connectivity or it's spotty, then there should be an alternate plan in place. We've been charged by the state with uh, taking attendance on a daily ba basis, and that means just making some kind of connection with each student, could be by phone or email. Um, but then also each school is concerned with tracking engagement and learning. So even after, um, the break, we'll still be getting packets of things out there and hard copy resources to kids who um, who don't have access to the internet resources. And if if you feel that there's an issue that your, your child um, is having trouble accessing their learning because of the technology piece, then definitely reach out to your teacher. Adam, the... Uh Incidental report that was in our folder as of last Friday is different than the one you just briefed us on. Is, is that correct? Um, let's see. No, I had uh, I was talking about the transition to school closures and remote learning, and that that is in there. Okay. Um, the reason. Because um, some of the questions that we're getting right now is about graduation and about prom. And uh, could you expound upon those two subjects? Sure. So we're going to get, um, actually, if you saw my, um, did you see my message today? It went out at five? No. Okay. So in that message, I mentioned that I'm going to update folks when we get additional guidance, which is supposed to come out prior to May 8th on the end of the year. And once I get that, I'll be letting folks know what the end of the year looks like. But we're still waiting to find out uh, what the state has in mind. Um, um, I heard today on um, Governor. Go ahead. No, I just, I, I guess my internet's not that great up here. I, I keep getting kicked off. Go figure. Right. Sometimes if you the, the, the visual, um, it uses less, less bandwidth. Okay. Did you have a question, Adam, or Yes, Governor Scott said today at his news conference that on Friday he would be extending the stay at home order, but he would give no particulars, even though the press kept hounding him. And <laughs> I see in Maine or New Hampshire where they put it to the middle of May. So yeah. the stay at home order. So yeah, that'll that have an effect on the end of the school activities too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the VPA is probably waiting for, his next press conference to decide what they're doing with sports because that's been a point of frustration for a lot of people. Um, the the uh, spring sports is still up in the air at this point, but right. we should get uh, once once he briefs the press on Friday, we should have a better idea of 
certainly where things are headed. Um, he he did say that there's definitely going to be an extension of the order. Yes, he's, he said that now for a week, but he won't give particulars yeah. on it. And those yeah. are broadcast live on WCAX TV. Yeah, and VPR. Yeah. I had a different question, but also about the superintendent's incidental. I was wondering about, there's sort of a, a pretty good list at the bottom of some different positions that we're looking to hire. And I was wondering um, how those would take place under the current circumstances. Sure, we've been holding interviews uh, for a number of positions throughout the SU and we've been holding them virtually. Yeah. So uh, we, we do the same thing, we get a team together and um, the team looks at uh, interview application materials, and uh, there's a point person who facilitates it, and the person um, joins virtually. I mean, all the members, obviously, are, are virtual. Um, but uh, that's what we've been doing, and uh, it's, it's a process that's being used uh, across the country. Great. Okay, it's, so it's about 6.20. I'm thinking we probably should head into the executive session. Does everybody feel comfortable with uh, the principal, the uh, superintendent's incidental report? Thank you, Adam. You bet. Thanks. Do I need, yeah. do I need to go to the other phone line for security, or we is do? We have to. Do we need to vote to go into executive session, or do we just sort of do it? You have to have a motion to go into executive okay. session. Can I, can I get a motion you, then? You have to specify exactly what it's for. So, what is it for? It's for a uh, student matter. I'll, I'll make, make that motion. Oh. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we go into an executive session regarding a student matter, including to include the administration. Is that correct? Is Actually, um, just uh, Pat. Okay, shall I, I'll amend that. I make a motion that we go to- you amend my, um, Will we include Pam Cushman, our guidance counselor as well, Adam? Yeah. Yes, Pam, Pat, and myself. Who was the other person? Pam, Pam, Pam Cushman. Cushman. Yeah, Hardwick Elementary guidance counselor. She was, uh, she played a key what is role. What name? Pam, uh, Pam Cushman. Pam Cushman. <laughs> and okay, Adam, sure. are you in on this meeting as well? Yes. And do okay. So, <laughs> shall I make that motion? Yes. I have a question. Okay, first. I make a motion that oh, we go into on. executive. Yeah. Point of order. Yes. The guy from the Gazette is he still in this conversation? He is. Okay, then we need to have him leave or. Whoever's on a phone needs to go to a different number because he cannot be here. in executive session. All right, all right. We're I, all going. To, we're all the people who are going to go into the executive session are going to leave this call and go into a different call. So, okay. So it'll be okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Then okay, I second right. the motion. Rose, can you make the order or make the motion again? Sure. I make a motion that we go into executive session to uh, regarding a student matter to include uh, the guidance counselor and the principal of Hardwick Elementary and the superintendent. I will second that. Okay, everybody unmute your microphones, please. Okay, all those in favor of going to an executive session, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries, and we're going in. We will come back to this number when we're out of executive session. Okay. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we authorize Catherine to sign the letter that will be written by Pedro on our behalf. I second that motion. Everyone, please take your microphones off of mute. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion aye. carries.
Sorry, I was abstaining just because I missed the, what we were voting on. Oh, sorry, Lauren. They were just, they just voted to authorize me to sign the letter drafted by Pietro on the board's behalf. Okay, sorry. You can change my vote to I. I recorded as I. Okay. That's fine. Sorry about that. I didn't check to make sure everybody was there. No problem. I just like lost track of the link. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So the next thing we need to do is the principal's incidental report. Um, does anyone have questions about that? Lots of distance learning. I reserve the right to question later. Okay. All right, so if I, can I share the file with you? Yeah, I'm gonna call the office tomorrow and have them set me all this stuff. Okay, let me see if I can. Well, it won't do me any good tonight because it would come in on my phone and, but I, I'll go over it another day. Okay. Don't take time now, it's late. Okay. Um, so there are two, I guess the only thing I saw of note was that Maureen Demers is retiring at the end of the year and that a teacher at Lakeview is transferring to Hardwick to fill Sarah Bursing's retirement which I hadn't realized Sarah was retiring. Yeah, Sarah had announced that um, much earlier in the year, and okay. I think we shared that in an earlier I just, report. I just don't remember it. That's not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions regarding the principal's incidental report? Okay, I'm going to keep moving right along. Okay, so discussions item. It is 7.42. So let's try to take a couple minutes for each of these. I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's try for two minutes for each of these. Um, the first one is the new date for the annual meeting and budget informational. Uh, I think, Adam, the question is, what do we have to do in order to have that happen, to change the date and, and of those two things? Well, I, I believe John sent us both an email. Okay. Uh, one thing was to put it on the agenda, which we've done. No, that's incorrect, Adam. It would take a vote of the electoral at a full district meeting. Uh, I think, yeah, I know, but I think there are a series of steps. So first, put it on the agenda, decide to hold the vote, I'm assuming. But let me see if I can pull up that email. Yeah, I know. I'm looking for it as well. Here we go. So we have to call for a special meeting where we warn the change of the date of the annual meeting. It can be done by a community member if they get a petition filled out and presented to the board. Then the board would need to take action within 60 days. The special meeting could only have one article and it could be to set a new date for the annual meeting. So we would need to have, he was saying he would recommend we have a specific plan in mind like the third Wednesday of a month or something to that effect. Um, the voters would come just as they would to their annual meeting and the town clerks would be there to do voter registration and they would vote on the article and then they would either pass or not. And this would be the special meeting. So it says, if we wait until the next annual meeting, it won't go into effect until the following year. So if we want to change this for next next annual meeting, we would need to have a special meeting sometime this year, which is slightly a moot point at this point because we can't meet. So I don't know how we would really <laughs> call a special meeting. Well, I mean, at some point, maybe we'll meeting. come out of this. I know. Adam, what were you going to say? Um, you, could, you could do it remotely. We could. I'm, I, I think I would like to, personally, I'd like to sort of wait to see how uh, our April 20th meeting goes. Um, 
and see how many folks come to that from the public. If yeah. it's amazing, then I think we could totally do a special meeting because everybody's sitting around, they got nothing to do. But other than that, I, I think I'd rather, I don't know that I want, that I feel comfortable like trying to do something like that. And that could be potentially a lot of people. I don't yeah. know. You're, you're also talking about a lot of people that don't have the capability to go to a remote thing. They don't have cell phones. They don't have computers. They don't have internet. They just can't do it. And you're discriminating severely their constitutional right to vote if you do that. But they can call in. They can, I mean, assuming that they have a telephone number and we're posting this everywhere, they can call in. That's it, There's not a requirement to have the internet. The one question that I do have is how would the town clerks, like the, the amount of time it would take for town clerks to go through and verify that everybody is a voter. That's my one, I'm not sure yeah. how we would do that. So I Let's, I, can we table this and let's revisit it at our May meeting and see where we are with the whole, uh, whatever this thing's called, stay home thing. Is everybody okay with that? Please. Sure. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay, next on the list is location slash housing for OSSU staff. Um, Somebody had an idea about this, Rose, at the staff meeting that we had. What was that idea? No, somebody had some idea about this. It was the the extra, um, the property on the Hazen, the current Hazen property. There's a house there. Um, but actually beyond that, mm -hmm. um, Hazen raising bond money to, uh, to execute some renovations and included in that would be a potential... Um, spot for oh, um, for central office staff. Um, I've since talked with Amy, and my opinion is that um, that would jeopardize the bond vote um, by throwing an extra wrinkle in, and we already have a potential plan uh, to move our offices. And you're moving your offices where? And why? Um, yeah, the where is confidential at this point because it's it's still in the works. The why is because our current property is in disrepair and the um, landlord uh, has been lax about repairing it. Okay. <clears throat> um, I just think was, go ahead, LaRose, sorry. Um, I just had, a, I remember us having this discussion last year and there was a discussion about um, moving the OSSU central office to Wilkett to the MSI building. And then we ended up not doing that and staying in the current location. But um, in that plan was some contingency where um, the landlord would keep up some, fix some certain things and keep up other things. And um, my question is, are, do we need to uh, break? Is there some kind of breaking of the lease in order to move or are we still under that contract? Yeah, no, that's a good question. We're actually, um, there was, yeah, there was an agreement made. Um, and part of that agreement was that if the agreed upon improvements weren't made, then we could break the contract and move elsewhere. And so that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I am wondering about if this should, if the location and housing for the SU staff should figure into the campus utilization, because I know that one of the big things that came up was moving the sixth graders to Hazen in terms of the conversation we have with the staff, which would create more space in the elementary schools. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Because I think one of the things that I think actually a community member, now that my head's not you know, is working a little bit. I think that one of, well, I think a community member that I was talking to about this was saying, well, what if the SU staff moved into Lakeview if if we move, because there's the staff, and I, for some reason this is not on here. I thought, I thought we were supposed to report out every month about our like campus utilization building meeting thing. But the staff meeting that we had, there was a lot of conversation about creating a middle school up at Hazen. 
which does create the problem of we're just taking more kids away from the elementary school, but it also is very much to the point of what do the kids need and how do we meet that need? And, and it sounded like from the staff that they're really saying, we really need to be meeting the sixth graders in a better spot. And they, they were feeling like a middle school would be a good, a good solution for that. So maybe I'll throw that out there and we can, can, we can put this back on the, like one and two can go on the future agenda items as well. And we'll revisit this again next month. When, um, <coughs> excuse me, when do we need to, when does the superintendent's office need to make a decision about moving? When does that have to happen? We're actually looking um, not for next year, but the year after. So there's uh, plenty of time. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the unified sports program. I, I think really that this keeps staying on our agenda because it's it keeps being brought up to us at various meetings and by community members. And I think that... All I'm going to say about it, which anybody else is welcome to say what they'd like to say about it, but um, we really need to work toward, and I don't know if the, I don't know if the board just needs to like nail down a policy to make it happen, but what happened this year with there just being like enough kids at all three schools to have a program is not what the community is asking for. It's not what parents are asking for. They want to have a sports program that is equitable within the district. That doesn't mean that some kids are put on a two through fourth grade, you know, team that plays against a third and fourth grade team. Like they want there to be, it's wildly inequitable right now because Hardwick has a very rich sports program in some sports and Lakeview and Woodbury, while they may be heartfelt from a, from, from there are some parents who really don't feel like it is equitable and the opportunity for those kids is not there. So somehow it's, I know it is not the board's position to, uh, to tell the principals how this should be done but the way that it was done this year is not, we're not getting the feedback that this is what people want to see. They're not happy with that. And, and asking the board to have a unified sports program keeps coming up. So can I ask you a question about that? Yes. Um, didn't uh, Kaylee talk about potentially reach being able to coordinate in this area? I think that reach can coordinate some things in this area, but I don't think that reach is going to, I mean, if we look at what Hardwick has in terms of they've got multiple grades and they have gendered sports. So they have a boys team and a girls team and reach has to be very, um, uh, they have to offer many things other than just sports. And I don't know that they can put that much resource into having, like, I think they would be good if they wanted to offer like some second, like some stuff for like the younger kids, like K through two, or maybe just second grade. But I think that like the more competitively, like, I don't want to say competitive, but just do, does it, does it make sense what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that reach can really do something that big because they have to be, usually when Reach offers sports, it's like one or two days a week. It's not, I don't know. Do, do, can, like, I, can I just pop in for a second? Because I think part of it and, and the way from a small school perspective that I'm hearing from Kaylee is it's sort of essential that sports are included in after school because we need to meet a certain percentage of participation. Mm -hmm. So if we have um, kids going to sports and not after school program, then we're actually um, depleting that program. So so not to say that what you're saying can't happen, I'm just kind of throwing that out there as there should be some sort of connection in order to get that 21st century program to happen with fidelity. So then I think, go ahead, Adam. I was just gonna suggest, it sounds like um, the board wants to direct um, administration to create a unified sports program would, would that be a sufficient direct 
directive and then let the principals and Kaylee kind of um, work out a model to then bring back to you? Does everybody else, could, could other board members speak about that? Because I don't want to be the only voice on this. Um, <laughs> No, it's not. We can't hear you. Kim, I have, I see a gallery view of everybody and I, and you must have two windows open with the same Google Meet because you're in it twice. So do you have another tab open with this? Yep. He left one of them. Okay, great. Excellent. Hey guys, this is Luke. Um, I agree with you, Catherine or Adam. I think we should just direct the principals to combine the sports programs, create a unified program. I I agree, Luke. I just I also think um, I think it's important that like Catherine has spoken about us talking about a um, and my brain is getting tired, so excuse me, but to get a like a not a mission statement, but a, a kind of a vision of what. We want the sports program, not tech, like the nitty gritties of what it needs to look like from day to day, but just the overarching goal of it. Yep. Um, so I think it's a two prong. I think, I, th I agree that it's, I think it's a good idea Adam had to direct the administration to put together a model and see if they can put something together for us to look at and just as a first step. Yeah, and I think- I agree. We yeah, I think what you're talking about is a uh, like, uh, yeah, I don't remember what we were saying, but something that would talk to speak to sort of sportsmanship, teammanship, competitive, just kind of, yeah, an opportunity yeah. for all. Yeah. So I think so. Okay, so I've heard from Luke and Sam. Rose, have you weighed in? I hadn't yet, but I'm fully in support that we, as a board. Um, give our um, blessing to the administration to make a unified sports program and um, definitely to focus on the sort of goal of it being um, equity and also um, a program that supports good sportsmanship and equal opportunity and skill building beyond the, the um, athletic skills, but um, other skill building. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we still have Kim? Yes, I'm right here. Are you, are you in favor of us directing the administration principals to create a unified uh, sports program and then come back to it with us for like a like as a draft kind of thing to look at? Yes, I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So you. Uh, yeah. That? Okay. Okay. So yes, Adam, let's go ahead and, uh, well, the board's going to direct you guys to do that thing you said, and we'll revisit this after you guys look at that and come up with something with reach. However, it makes the most sense. Do you want a motion to that? Or is this just I don't, directing Adam? I think we're just directing them. I don't think we're making a motion. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next is the creation of a building fund for the OSUED. Um, it's almost eight o'clock. Do we have a challenge to tackle that? I don't know how, Adam, how, how complicated is that? So I shared with you, um, the information that Larry Eldred put together, um, which, which you charged me to collect um, right. each of the structures. I think, I think that'll take some time. We probably need to consult John about the, um, financial piece of that. So let's move, uh, let's go ahead and move number four to uh, the May meeting to future agendas. Um, and then let's look at teacher appreciation week details. Um, so for at the SU board meeting, which I, for some reason the SU board report out never gets on our agenda and I don't understand why but it never gets on the agenda. So we had a great board meeting. One of the things that came out of it is that uh, the SU board uh, asked Amy and Rose, they're right, they wrote a letter to, this, to all of the SU staff just expressing our appreciation for the work that they're doing um, that's so been so crazy in terms of the 
craziness of general life right now. Um, so we saw the copy of that and that's going to go to the whole staff um, uh, from the full SU board. Um, but I was, we, you know, we were supposed to do this teacher appreciation week thing. And I, while I don't want it to just like die, I also, I have been racking my brain trying to think of like what we could do to tell the teachers that we really, we realize they're going the extra mile. I mean, this, this letter really says all of that, but I didn't know if people wanted to do something additional. And that was like, we get two minutes on it. Can we put something in the Gazette? The Gazette would love you for that. Sure. You have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that part, but maybe if we had a, um, I don't know if one of the art teachers wanted to challenge her kiddos to make something. I, I, would sort of, I mean, if we put something in the Gazette, could we, I mean, if were we going to spend money on food? Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't we just spend that on a big ad in the Gazette saying like, you guys are awesome. Who's artistic? Not me. Not me. <laughs> I, I noticed in this week's Gazette, they've got a full page that basically says Vermont Strong type of thing. And I think they were trying to use up space. But if you want to do, you know, a fair size ad, quarter page or half, pa half page and have maybe a picture of the school. Is there a group picture of the kids that has been taken recently? Not of all. I don't think of all three schools now. <clears throat> I, you know, wonder, and I wonder if that might actually have some photo or something. I don't know. Just a thought since they do well, a photograph. Check with Vanessa. Vanessa might. Yeah. Or, um, exactly. I, I liked that. I liked the idea of a student artwork if the if the art teachers were to ask um, permission from a student, if they could use their art, a lot of the art teachers already collected artwork throughout the school year before this point. Okay. I'm, so I'm just, my concern about, I don't want to ask a teacher to do anything for teacher appreci appreciation. Right. <laughs> I don't want oh, to, true. I'm not really wanting to put anything on their plate right now extra, and especially not like a job for the, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what I was thinking is maybe just pictures of the school. Um, we miss you. Thank you for what you're doing at home, helping our students type of thing. Yeah, that sounds good. And you know, I've I've had I've sent ads into the Gazette before. You know, you, you can kind of we can kind of just put it together, and they'll kind of typeset it. You know, bigger font right. or, or kind of format it. Right. So we, we don't have to, you know, create the whole thing really. And who's so, this? Oh, this Lauren, is speaking, Lauren Arcuri. Lauren, would you would okay. you want to work on that with me? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy okay. to do that. Okay. I think I think that's a nice idea and it's putting it out to the community, like, you know, a reminder of how hard teachers are working and to take a moment to appreciate. But I also, yep. I'm sure there are a lot of teachers that are not receiving the hard work gazette. So that would then fall on, maybe Is there, send out an email, like with a link to the article or something. That's what I was going to suggest was, is there a list of just the three school staff that you could just send a carte blanche email specifically to each one of them, not as a group, but as each individual, thanking them for their time and effort and understanding during this very difficult time in history. I, I just had another uh, brainstorm. I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but on Facebook, they've got um, put a stuffed animal in your window so the kids can drive around and look at them. Yeah. Is there a way... Is there a way that we could, um, I don't know how we would do it without using the teachers, but is there a way to kind of put the same idea out there to the, the kids? Like you're stuck at home right now, draw a picture and put it in your window to thank your teachers. That would work too. That's a really that good would idea. be something that the, soup, the principals could figure out maybe. Can I, can I chime in a little bit here? Yeah. Um, as a staff at, at Hardwick, where um, we all put together a picture of ourselves uh, with a "We miss you" kind of sign that we're putting together with a song behind it to send out to all the kids and families. 
and perhaps there could be something organized where kids could have the option to send a picture to create something like that to go out to all the teachers but just a thought so if so who would so sam you want to you want to you want to spearhead that uh sure i don't know how i would do it i don't even know that's, that's the thing i don't know how we would get i mean i feel like teachers getting pictures together of themselves is one thing but but us asking kids for pictures of themselves to give to their teachers i feel like we might get in trouble with that I th I'd like the idea of putting a thank you in the window because then people walking by and the general public would see the thing, the note or poster or whatever the kids developed. So Patrick, maybe what we could do and, and Justine and Craig is we could uh, maybe somebody, maybe Sam, you want to put together like something like a little... I don't know, a flyer that can go out electronically with like the weekly update or something that could go out to all the, cause this isn't teacher appreciation week isn't until May. Oh, so we have time. Okay. We have some time, but then if we could have that go out then, um, then maybe the, the kids could do it that week. So tell me, tell me again what I'm doing. Um, you're making, we were going to do teacher appreciation on the 8th. So I think it's the week of the 4th of May. So you're going to make like some kind of, I don't know, it, this was the idea that you had about putting a picture in the window of we miss you. So like some kind of, uh, some kind of flyer that has an example or I don't something know. For this, something for this, like the, for like Adam to send out? Uh, I think for the principals to send out to the kids, like to the family. So it would go by email? Yeah. The root B, email? Okay. Yeah. The other piece of that is if you have them do it on the same day, um, someone could drive around, take pictures of all of those, those posters and pr create a collage that could then be sent to teachers in case they don't see them driving around. They've got all of them. a lot of, <laughs> a lot of kids. Are you volunteering to do that? Adam? <laughs> and I'm thinking of like the, like, rural parts of our towns and yeah. Woodbury and you know Greensboro is like there's no I mean everybody's scattered everywhere so you've got I the bus, the same, um, I, folks are driving buses and they could as they I, deliver meals they could take a quick shot okay, I have a question. Question. um I go ahead Rose um I was just thinking about how many kids really live in very rural spots and even the the, the school food delivery goes to the end of their driveway, not necessarily to their house. I'm one of those. <laughs> so I have a different idea. Okay. Could we actually, instead of this, could we have the kids send like a picture or a letter or something to this is a lot of mail to the SU office addressed to their specific teacher. And then we could just divvy those up and give them to the teachers. Like we Wouldn't could send them to the school. Yeah. Deliver them to the school or to the SU office or, or some to one, some one place that could then divide them up and then give them to the teacher. Like it would be more of like your class is giving you this like, hey, we miss you, or you're great, or thanks so much, or this has been so cool, or whatever. But like, as a, it would be more direct. So it'd be like to your homeroom teacher. So it wouldn't be that all the teachers would get stuff from all the kids, but then all the kids would be allowed to be involved and know that they could touch their, at least their one teacher. What about the paras? I don't know. I don't have all the <laughs> answers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's there's. I know because a lot of the kids all have all have contact with all the different teachers, and this is so easy when we can just bring food to the school, but we can't. So I just have a quick qu question: How many staff teachers and staff um, are we talking about at the three schools combined? Is well, it I like forty or fifty? I'd speak. Hardwick has uh, the all the staff is mid fifties for staff at Hardwick. 25-ish with people that are there part-time for Lakeview. So it's 65. No, 75. At Lakeview? No, hard at Lakeview. Is Craig still on the call? Yeah, I'm here. I'm <laughs> just thinking, uh, I think about 20, you know, if oh, you include uh, teachers. 
Okay. So we're so, like in the 90, 100 range. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember going back to the original I, idea I of, of posting something in the newspaper and then sharing that out to the staff and then sort of saying, you know, when we're able to get back together again, let we're going to have some celebrate with some food and, yeah. you know. I think I think yeah. it would be I think we have a higher chance of actually doing it if we just I mean we can bla we can put the ad in the gazette we can we can share copies of it on Facebook or something like that also like we can try but I think we have to be realistic that we're not going to be able to get it to everybody and I do think I think trying to get the kids to do something I, I just I think that they'll appreciate the effort. I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm worried that we're going to get ourselves into the weeds and we've spent more than two minutes on this so far. Okay. Catherine. Yeah. Catherine, um, with the stay at home order, some of us are refusing to go to the post office. And unless you've got envelope and stamp at home, you're asking them to go to the post office. Yeah. We're not going to do that. Okay. We aren't going to do that anymore. It was just an idea, but we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to put the ad in the Gazette. Lauren and I will deal with it, and we'll maybe give it to Sam to share on Facebook or something. Maybe we'll all share it on Facebook or something like that. We can put it on the school's websites or whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll do something simple like that. Well, there must be a way that the principals are contacting the staff that could go through that way. Yep. Well, and, we'll I, and I do think that you know, when we are able to leave our home, it would be nice to, I mean, teachers appreciate food or cards any time of the year. <laughs> so uh, we can do it okay. a different time, but at least give a nice gesture. And that's nice because it's public in the community of like, hey, you're doing, you know, you're doing some yep. good stuff. Um, okay, so we still have three more things. Um, what is the action item that we should do first? The Vermont Municipal Bond Bank. Yes, Adam, what, what do we that? have to do for that? So uh, you have to make a motion to, um, let's see, let me pull this email up. Needs oh, to be signed by the Oakwood be. Board uh, as they assume the Hardwick Elementary bond. So it's something that needs to be signed. So basically, you need to make a motion to sign it. And, and when you can physically sign it, someone, Catherine, probably you would go in and sign it. Okay. Is there a special verbiage for the motion? Uh, just, uh, you know, someone needs to make a motion to sign the um, Vermont Bond Bank or Certificate of Project Completion. I make a motion that we authorize Catherine to sign the certificate of completion from the Vermont Municipal Bond Bank on our behalf. I second. second. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Okay, and Adam, can you explain to everybody, because I can't remember how we're doing the, cons the consent agenda stuff. Yep, so there's a, um, there's a folder full of vouchers, and um, John sent an email around with instructions. I believe it's just the, clerk, the um, officers need to approve them. And their approval would go into the minutes, and then when we get back to normalcy, they'd uh, the clerk would go in and sign. Okay. So, um, does anyone have any questions about the monthly narrative or any of that stuff? Catherine, can I chime in for just a moment? Please do. Um, I'm going to direct this towards Rick only because I don't know where to direct it. But somebody purchased a digital camera in the amount of $400. 
to who who did that? Do you know that, Adam? I think we talked about this already, wasn't it? Hardwick Elementary. Yeah, yeah. We we no, that we was a, that was a hundred and something. Uh, the next AP was another camera for uh, a sum of four hundred some odd dollars. Nobody knows anything about it. I think that would. Uh, I'm I'm thinking it's a Dave Martin uh, purchase or for through tech. But if you like, I can, I can follow up to, to get more detail on that. If, if you don't mind, because it seems kind of strange, you know, for yeah. hardwood to be buying two digital cameras. Yeah, let me, I'll email Dave right now um, to check with me tomorrow on that and, and we can get bring that back. All right. The next question had to do with why did we contract out to have the tree trim on the upper ball field as opposed to talking to the select board or the public work or the electrical company before we went and paid somebody to do it? Um, I'll answer a little bit, but I think John Smith would have more information on that. I don't, I don't think John's with us right now. Um, but I, I, if I remember correctly, that um, it was our responsibility, and therefore we would do it. But John would be the person to to, to answer that question to. And I'll just make a, a recommendation. Um, Kim, you should feel welcome prior to these board meetings to contact John if it's a, a maintenance and buildings and ground question, or contact Dave Martin if it's a tech question, and get those answers prior to the board meeting because um, generally they're not present unless it's during the budget season, but certainly feel free to do that. Okay. Um, all right, does, okay, do we have any, I guess we need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as published. I'll second that. Okay, microphones on. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as published signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Or right, is abstaining. Thank you. Okay, so we did that stuff. Um, how are you guys feeling? Do we want to do we want to table fundraising, closure of school for the remainder of the year, and update on how families are accessing the meals and generally how that's going district wide, or do we want to take one? Or what do you guys want to do? It's eight seventeen. I think we ought to move the fundraiser uh, to either the twentieth or May. So the only problem with doing that is the OSSU board is um, scheduled to take action on that at their May meeting. Okay, so. Can you just remind us what the fundraiser policy is that we're addressing or talking about? Yeah, it's linked right there. Um, I, I oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I have no idea what you're talking about. I did not receive it. What link? Oh, there's uh, a link. No way of getting agenda. into one. Right? You refresh the agenda. Um, yeah. The agreement. No, not my agenda. Okay. Okay. All right. We know you. We know you don't have it. It's okay. If you guys can, if you look at the agenda, it should be highlighted in blue, and you can click on it. Um, board okay. chairs were, were given the charge of going back to their boards and and getting feedback on that, um, so that they could bring that feedback back to the uh, May meeting. Could you just highlight it? Um, I think that the one question that came up about this was how this affects PTOs and or parent teacher organizations or parent organizations at the schools, friends of Hardwick, friends of Woodbury, things like that. Are you going to disallow it, or are you just 
making I don't, it I don't know how it affects it. Can Adam speak to that? Yeah, so is my mic on? Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically that's feedback that you'd bring back to the um, larger board. So you'd say, you know, we, um, and I'm not sure if you have an opinion one way or the other, but if you want PTOs or parent organizations to be able to fundraise, um, then, you know, you'd bring that back and, and um, present it to the, to the larger board and maybe, maybe other have, have a similar idea. Because I mean, I'll say that that you know, at Hardwick, like this first under three, it says all funds raised on behalf of OSSU schools become property of the schools and must support the educational mission of the school. Well, the PTO bought the electronic sign that's outside of Hardwick. So does that fund like does that support the educational mission of the school, or is that considered a building thing? Like I don't. That's that's sort of what I'm not. I think. I think we have to be careful if you have parents willing to fund a specific item that did not have to go into a budget. And right. They raised big bucks for that sign. Um, and you tell them they can't, then you must be prepared for your budget to go up. And they bring different groups to school that one could say are amusement versus educational. I know one time they had some bike lists come in and do trick stunts and stuff that's not right. educational but it's good for the kids to have that so you've got to be real careful and i would rather see each school develop their own fundraiser type activities that are authorized and not have a third party having to give their money to the school because i can guarantee you they would fold and you would lose that money so uh, i think that flexibility is built into this policy if you look at um the uh, authorization for fundraising so that the principal would basically um, give a parent organization permission for um, to fundraise but there are certain guidelines they they'd be following um, for example you know probably would have to support the vision of the school um, i don't think a a um, you know there's nothing wrong with a sign certainly that communicates or, or helps the athletic program but um if you want any more specific language in here about parent groups you know that's an option as well okay okay well when does, we could discuss it on the 20th maybe um well we could i mean i can bring this concern back to the SU board meeting on in May. Yeah. If that if that is helpful, if people feel like that's complete in their concerns about it. Um and in the meantime, right, I can share this with like my a community member in Woodbury who is leads our PTO and wants to give yeah. people give feedback. So I can share this document with her and she can present feedback. Before that, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Then you can communicate that to the board. So we could communicate to Catherine. Yes. I just had a question about the part where it says, uh, uh, the part about that fundraising should not interfere with students' academic work. It just seems so vague that I I didn't really understand how anyone could decide whether or not. It was interfering. Yeah, that seemed sort of. I mean, yeah, so I fully support be, that idea. An example would be: um, you're going to take a day, and um, kids are going to skip their classes in order to go to door to door um, to raise money for the yearbook. No. Part of the I, of the vagueness is to allow for, um, you know, flexible interpretations when it comes to procedures at each at each building. I I understand that part. Um, I just, I recognize that I think um, often um, students do make fundraising priority and sometimes families do as well and it does interfere with academics, but um, it just isn't clear there who gets to decide <laughs> when, when it is interfering. I think it's, if you look up in the, up in the authorization for fundraising rules, it yeah. 
it says uh, B, it says the principal shall establish the procedure for, you know, fundraising. And I think it sounds like it's up to the principal. Yeah, again, this okay. is a policy. So policies are at like the 20,000 foot level. And then each building uh, would, would establish their own procedures. That sounds fine. That makes sense. I have a question, Adam, about the crowdfunding. Um, does this language mean where it says in order to accomplish uh, teachers and administrators may only solicit crowdfunding opportunities that provide products and or services directly to the school and not raise money that are then distributed to the individuals out of the project? So, so that would, in a sense, a, a few years ago, some teachers raised some money to get uh, like rain to buy raincoats for their kids to do the eco program. That means that would not be okay. No, that's fine. The um, the crowdfunding or crowdsourcing is we're having um, issues with um, questionable platforms online, so we want want to limit it to a, a reputable platform. Um, I think what you're talking about maybe is how we raise the funds. So people shouldn't be storing money at their own house. Uh, there should be a, a procedure in place for how we deal with the handling of the money. And we have issues with that right now as well. Okay. This so, is definitely a needed policy. Okay. Because it just says that you can only solicit crowdfunding opportunities that provide products or services directly to the schools and not to raise money. So that's that's where I'm like because they they specifically went on a like a go, it was like a GoFundMe thing to raise a thousand dollars to buy rain suits and and I I was assuming that they weren't getting a product or a service they were getting money that was then going to buy the rain suits which I don't know if the teachers purchased them in advance or not but I'm just wondering like I don't really want to say. Like I, I guess I'm just wondering if that if if that sort of a thing would would not be okay under this policy. Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, okay. The way I interpret this, um, you know, the talking about a fiscally sound environment, right? Uh, or to accomplish this, teachers administrators may only solicit crowdfunding opportunities to provide products and or services directly to the schools. So, again. Um, that mean to because that means to me that you can only I mean I don't even see how you would crowdfund something for right. a product or a service. You really I just crowdfund that. money. Yeah. Yeah. So that's language that we could potentially change as well if you if you wanted to make it okay, for example, to purchase raincoats for individuals. I mean um, that, does that does that think, affect the kids raising money for these trips that they take out of country? Because that's not a service to the school. Right, so we could rephrase that. Um, well, yeah, I guess we could rephrase that. Okay, I can bring, I'll bring that up to the, I'll bring that up at the meeting. I'm writing these down, so. I'll take a note too. Catherine, I'll find the policy and if I have any questions, I'll send you a note. Please do. It, do you wanna, is Jennifer uh, Laundry still part of the PTO for hard as, far as I know she is. Are you? Uh, she's not, she doesn't work with the friends of HES anymore, Jennifer. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know who's, who heads that up, Pat? Yeah, there's a, a number, but the, they have a OSSU email account under for friends of HES at OSSU.org. So okay. you can put it right there. Shouldn't this policy go before all of the groups that are raising money for the school? So they can have an input into it? Yeah, that's. I'm going to send it to friends of HES. Phoebe's going to share it with the person who runs the thing at Woodbury. And uh, is there is there an organization, uh, Justine at Lakeview, that raises money for the school? Yep, we have PLUS. Okay. Do you, do you want me to, do you have contact information for them? And I could send. I have individual contact information for the members, yes. But they is don't have a email address from OSSU. Do they have a leader, like a person who's in charge of it? Um, they, they share responsibilities. There's somebody who's in charge of some of the finances that I could, could that direct to you. Great. Yeah, that would be great. And I will send it to that person and I'll get feedback from them. 
Okay. Um, I kind of feel like the next two things are kind of important and pertinent for right now. So can you guys hang for a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. So closer of the school for the remainder of the year, this is happening. Uh, I feel like uh, Adam has spoken to, and so has Pat just in things about uh, how they're moving to a continuation of learning at this point. Um, does anyone have any questions specifically regarding the closure of the school year or the meals? I guess they're just all the same. I have a couple questions, and maybe it's just because I'm the newbie. Yep. Who is currently still on payroll? Everyone is still currently on payroll, and we intend to keep it that way. Are the uh, parents working with the teachers? Yes. We just, um, part of our continuation of learning or continuity of learning plan includes a um, procedure for paras to identify from a menu of options, um, all of which support uh, student learning, um, certain activities, including professional development, and then log their hours and log their activity. Uh, the, the governor's original order was that um, everyone should remain on payroll and um, we've since received additional guidance from the state around how to ensure that. Uh, we've written a, uh, a procedure for that, a separate uh, financial piece for that. But um, we're ensuring, that, yeah, everyone has work and there's certainly a need for it as well. Is, are the, are, blah, blah, excuse me. Are our schools doing any of the essential daycare that I've seen other schools doing? Yes, we have a child care program in support of children of essential personnel, and that's been um, staffed by support staff. Uh, Kaylee Galloway Kane is um, coordinating that, our, our um, reach coordinator. And we've had about uh, anywhere between five and seven kids in that program. We've decided that if it falls below four, we'll discontinue it. The guidance around this program has changed as well. Initially, we were required to. Uh, set up such a program and maintain it. Um, and the most recent guidance uh, tells us that it's not mandatory, that um, okay. if we can, fine, but if, if we um, can't sustain it, then that's okay as well. Adam, do you have Michelle's contact information, the director here at Four Seasons? What's that? Um, just we're, we're providing essential care right now here at Four Seasons. Yes, right. And our, our kids, our pre-K kids are there. And you're and you're in con I'm just if you guys end up having to close yours and you've got kids. Oh yeah, no, we're we're definitely in touch. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah, okay. it. I just had a thank quick you, question. Adam. You bet. Yeah, thank you, Adam. I just had a quick question. Um, I know that since the buildings don't have students in them right now, that the um, that some of the projects that normally would happen in the summer um, can go ahead. Um, some of the building projects, which is great. Uh, I just wondered, do we as a board need to approve any of those or do they have a, already have the, the, our approval for those various projects? And that was just, that's it. Yep, sure. No, those are standard projects that would have gone on um, during the summer. Um, uh, some of which are, uh, you know, have been waiting until the building's empty. Um, but if it's, um, you know, some might be related to things that you've already approved. Um, I can't think of anything specific, but but um, if there were a question, yeah, we'd definitely bring it before the board. Thanks. Yeah. I have a question specifically about um, continuity of learning at Woodbury in the building, and we know that we have needed a sub position for a particular class there, and I know that Craig has taken on this extra role of providing for the students. And I'm wondering, is there is that the sustainable plan? Is, does that make sense for Craig? Does that make sense for the students? Is there is, is that being worked out? Yeah, Craig and I have been in touch about that. Um, Craig, do you want to uh, talk about that at all? Yeah, so <clears throat> the basic uh, situation is that the teacher on leave is has a um, I don't know how much I could talk about, but it's on a plan that that is hopefully possibly going to have him return 
at least in the role of helping to plan and coordinate some of those things. So there's no precise timeline um, just because it's, it's dependent on, on the work that the teacher's doing. Um, so right now, um, we didn't post for a subposition. Um, there is no timeline involved. So, or I should say there's no specific time. So what's happening with those kids currently? So currently, I'm filling in the role of a teacher for that class. And so I, I understand that you're saying the teacher is going to help with planning, but then are you still going to be executing it? For the time being until um, I get Adam and I kind of uh, decide whether or not he can, and we also have a plan to return also. Adam, so, do you feel um, like that's, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I think, now, I think it's, um, I've talked to Craig about what he's doing, and I'm, and I'm comfortable with the activities going on. Um, whether it's sustainable is another question. So we, I think we might want to look at um, a long-term sub at some point, but um, Craig and I will I'll touch base about that. Um, how many students are we talking about? Uh, 11, well, 10, including one homeschool student that attends one day a week. And what grade is this again? Grade three and four. Um, this might be a totally incredibly crazy thing to say, but because this is remote learning and because everything's crazy anyway, is there any chance of just dispersing those kids amongst the other teachers that are already doing third and fourth grade from the other two schools? That was my thought exactly. It's certainly something we could think about. I'm not talking about transferring them. I'm not talking about anything formal. Like I'm not trying to take students from Woodbury in the least bit, but I'm just saying in light of what's happening and instead of trying to hire a long-term sub to stand in for the last month and a half of school that is in taking place in this really kind of weird environment. Um, <laughs> since there are already teachers who are doing this and are in our district and it would, it would be a new face anyway. And I just, I feel like it's really asking a lot of Craig to be doing this. And I don't like the idea that we're like, not sure how we're going to do this. And, and we already have teachers for both of those grades that are, that have got continuous learning plans going and they're, you know, we're about to go into a break and the kids could just get dispersed and come back from break and like, bam, there they go. They're like working with these kids. So it's not like everybody's in a classroom. I mean, is that, uh, is that right. totally crazy, Craig? No, I think, think that's a great idea. Adam. Uh, Good idea, Catherine. I'm open. Yeah, I'm open You're to that idea. Ahead. Absolutely. I, I, uh, I worry about Craig and having too much on his plate and taking this on. I, but and that idea is, as creative as that is, I worry also about the students in this time not being a part of a community, you know, and they're trying to hang on to whatever they can. Um, well, they're being part of an online community and it's, and it's, I mean, none of the kids are seeing, the kids are only seeing, I don't know how they're all doing this. Like, I think probably it's somewhat different, but like, if we're talking about trying to, if we're looking at the best interest of the kids and the education that they're going to be receiving in this incredibly weird time, I feel like I know that they know Craig and he's a known face and like, that's important too. But I also feel like his mental health, like, I mean, this is an incredibly trying time for everybody. And I think getting the kids in, we have this opportunity where there's going to be a break and then we're all coming back and we're going to be, starting this, you know, con continuity of learning or however they're phrasing it. I just feel like that 
it just seems like a, a kind of like a, a space in there that it's not a lot of kids. If it was a lot more kids, I, I might, you know, hesitate, but they're not going to be, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think that the teachers could be sensitive to the fact that these kids are live in Woodbury. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, I wonder if you've got other options, like, I mean, that could be an option. I wonder, are there other, like, like we have a specialist in our building. Is, is that a person that's familiar that's able to take this on? Or are the other teachers able to take a few kids in addition to their caseload? I don't know. Or, or Craig, if, if it's not too much for Craig, but I just put that out there because the principal has a lot going on. Right. So. Kim, Kim would like to say Catherine? something. Hold on a second, Arise. Kim is going to say something, and then I'll get to you. Okay. Thank you. My question is directed towards Adam in the aspect of we're going to run into a issue with the uh, teachers union if we try to do this. If we try to disperse the kids amongst the other teachers? Yes. The other teachers from Lakeview and Hardwick Elementary are we going to run into a union issue. I don't anticipate that, um, but the only way to find out is, um, I mean, I could, um, I could talk to the union about it ahead of time. Um, I think it's a great idea. I just want to make sure we don't run into a sure. grievance followed by the union for yep. asking. Yep, no, I can look into that. Um, All right, thank you. Yeah, at this point, we've got a lot of good ideas, um, thanks to some comments here. So I'd say just let Craig and me uh, work it out. Okay, Arise had one mm -hmm. thing she wanted to ask. Go ahead, Arise. Um, I just want to make a statement that irregardless of taking the kids and splitting them between Hardwick and Lakeview or hiring a long-term sub, they're going to have somebody new anyway. And... This way, we know the quality of the teachers that we already have on staff and don't have to worry about trying to bring a new person up to speed as to where these kids are. And I think it's a good idea that Catherine had to disperse them because 10 kids between three or four teachers is not a lot of kids new and they've already doing the packets. So they just copy or send out a couple more. I can't believe it's going to create a whole lot more of work at that grade level. Yeah, I agree. I actually, I, really like ideal, so. I also okay. think, <clears throat> I, I, I think um, since there are Zoom meetings or Google meets that the students are doing, um, I'm sure the teacher could reach out in a way that sort of included the new kids into the group in a really welcoming way so that it wasn't just sort of like an add-on, but a, 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 some kind of celebration to include those kids if if you did go with that model good idea okay so let's um does anybody else have anything else they'd want to talk about either about the closure of the schools for the remainder of the year or an, or an update on families or kids accessing meals adam gave us the numbers for that in his incidental report um and i didn't know if anybody had questions about meals or how the delivery system is going or anything like that. Um, why did we decide to not continue them through the vacation? We had put, originally put in, in our application, we had said that we were going to um, just serve students on, uh, on instructional days. Okay. Um, and also we didn't have the, um, some other districts have the volunteers and we didn't want to tax the people who were already working really hard um we want to give them a break just as we're giving all other staff members a break okay okay i just <clears throat> i just had a question maybe this was in the notes but um are the bus drivers the one that are the ones that are going around doing the delivery or or um paras or other staff i just wasn't really clear on that yeah so the bus drivers are driving the buses and we have support staff members on board who are um, picking up the meals. Um, we have support staff members who are uh, creating, putting the meals together along with kitchen staff, and then they r ride the buses and deliver. Sounds good. 
All right. Anything else? Because we're getting to the end. All right. I make a motion we adjourn. Everybody else good with that motion? What about uh, agenda items? We are going to have on the agenda for May. I so I so I hesitate to put a lot on the on the April twentieth agenda. Um, Adam, you're are you going to be there on April twentieth? Uh, I think I might be able to. Yes. Okay. Typically, it's just so we would have Adam. We usually the principals usually don't come. I don't know if they were going to. I mean, we can if we want to move these agenda items to the April 20th one so that we can get them done before May, we could do that. But right now we've got, uh, from our original one, we've got the location and housing for the OSSU staff. I, I think the Unified Sports is going to May because I feel like having you do report on that on April 20th is a little quick. Um, the building fund. Number uh, one. The new date for that, yeah. So one, two, four, and seven, eight, nine. No, just nine. Yeah, just the PTO. I guess the whole the school closure about the budget. That number two can definitely happen on the twentieth. But I don't. I mean, do we want to have like more of a business meeting on the twentieth? And also, I mean, it's supposed to be mainly for public comment. I have really no idea how well that's going to be attended. But have we put the word out? We're going to. Yeah, okay, I was going to say. I have they been attended in the past? I mean, somewhat in person. They have. This is our yeah. first one. How many? Like ten. Is it the same people Although, all the time? No. No. Mm. Okay. And the, the meeting that we had online with the teachers had like 30 people on it. Yes, but that wow. was able to, we were able to email everybody individually. So that was kind of right. awesome. Are right. we all call for this meeting? Uh, we can do an all call. I think I'm going to try to get it into the email that, that the teachers or that the principals send out. Because well, because it's hard to give a web a, like it's hard to give a phone you know like a phone number and a voice I don't know just the fact that it's happening and then how to access how to join maybe right I just created a um, an invite including a uh, Google Meet link so you can share that link with anyone okay so um, I mean, we get I the we could have more of an agenda for the April 20th meeting, but I don't like I it's one of these things where like if we end up having a lot of community members, I want to be able to give the space for them to give their ideas. And I don't necessarily want to ask Adam and the principals to sit through all of that if we also right. have stuff on the agenda. So we've kind of but I but I, what do you guys want to do? Is there anything that can't wait till May? Um, I don't think so. Okay, that's your answer. Okay. Well, there we go then. All that stuff is good. That sounds good. We'll do all that and yeah. What day in May? Uh, I don't know. We were doing the first Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, May. Sorry. Was it the first Wednesday? Yeah. So that would be the fifth. When's the SU meeting, Adam? Sixth. Well, you're meeting the sixth. Um, is the yes, SU meeting the fourth? It's the fourth. Okay. So let's do that. May 6th? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, fantastic. Well, thank you guys all for coming. <laughs> and thank yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And we'll, we'll, uh, 
we'll we'll talk again later. We'll see you all on the twentieth. Stay safe. Stay well. Yep. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.